cheese. And now we were going to have a chicken dinner. But we had to cook it. They, when we were early on, when we were captured, to survive, to get a little extra bread or something, those soldiers who had cigarette lighters, watches, anything at all that the Nazis would like, they traded them. You would trade a, an expensive watch for a loaf of bread. And uh, so this one guy had his uh, cigarette lighter. We had the fire now. There was hay in the barn. We had a chicken. We could have a feast. And so somebody made this little fire. Fortunately, the guards didn't see it. They were outside. They didn't see it. We all huddled around that fire to try to protect it. He put the, they put the chicken in, feathers and everything. <laughs> Never, you know, who's going to sit and pluck, chick, pluck feathers when you're starving? Anyway, the chicken was ultimately cooked in some way. <laughs> and we were going to sp spread that one chicken over, there must have been about 18 to 20, 20 of us there. So we were going to share that one chicken. Unfortunately, whistles blew just as we finished cooking it. Oh. And uh, we were forced out, again, a forced march that night. Somebody spotted a sack in a corner. He threw the chicken into the sack. And so we carried that chicken with us. We were just waiting, we just wanted to get someplace so we could tear it up and, you know, you each would get enough to fill maybe a cavity. And uh, so we, we, we were in a forced march again. Now somebody had to carry the chicken, so somebody carried. It was the responsibility of the man behind the chicken carrier to erase the blood spots. They would drip, the chicken was dripping yet, there was snow on the ground, and the man behind had, had, to, had that responsibility, and he had to, do, had to rub it. We passed the chicken around so that one guy wouldn't be held responsible, because whoever was caught with it, he, was, he, he would have been killed. And so we passed it around, but again, it was a two-person responsibility. One carries and one sweeps away the blood. Uh, we finally did get that chicken to a barn, and they passed around the chicken. Again, there was so little there. You, you can imagine, among 18 men, how much chicken could they have? But each, each had a little finger full and stuck it into our mouth. And that was... Uh, it was magnificent tasting. Uh, but uh, anyway, it was a very dangerous thing to do, and I think we were fortunate that we were able to live through the chicken incident. <laughs> Thank you. How fortunate we are, Bob, uh, not only to have learned from you, but to be inspired by the example that you have set and the lessons that you have taught us from the very beginning, but especially tonight, and especially for the kids, whom, by the way, I would like to compliment for being so wonderful tonight. Thank you. So, fortunately, Les Feigen has been recording this, so we'll be able to share it in the future. But uh, um, we'll, we'll get you to augment it along the way, because I bet there are more stories along the way that we can add to it. We can watch for hours. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. So uh, but, uh, thank, thank goodness for the technology that will allow us to capture yet more I the mean, next time around. We'll get it to less because there are a number of people, members of the congregation, who couldn't be here tonight, and uh, they were hoping there would be films. So less, thank you. Right. And would you believe that conversation you had with Sidney Trubowitz was... Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to tell you, it was over 15 years ago. That's yeah, right. yeah, right. time flies. Yeah. Well, I don't want to hold you. Let's make Monsi.